Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Boomer Bus Podcast for March 7th, 2023. And like I'm saying, it's March. You know what that means. Cue that music. I'm here with my boy, Matt. How are we doing today, my guy? Good, good, good. We are back. It is March finally. It is time. My favorite time of the year. I had a good weekend. Now a busy week ahead with school and work. And then March Madness time. How about you? How was, how was your weekend? Oh, you know, it was solid. Uh, checked out some some final regular season basketball on Sunday. It was at the Iowa-Nebraska game. Um, there we go. Yeah, our apologies for no, no episodes the past couple weeks. You know, busy time of year. But we got a lot of stuff incoming now. So the calendar's starting to turn. A lot of events on. And like Matt mentioned, that's where we're going to start off here with some college basketball talk. Looking at the bubble a little bit here. So to start, Joe Lenardi, King, Mr. Brackets. I learned pre-recording, Matt's not a big fan of him, but how I base a lot of... Not a big fan. Not a big fan. How I base a lot of my bracketology information off of, at least a new bracketology day. And according to that, so his bubble here, his last four in, he has Mississippi State, Utah State, Rutgers and Nevada. Then his first four out are Oklahoma State, Wisconsin, Arizona State, and North Carolina. And then his next four out are Michigan, Charleston, assuming they don't get an auto bid, Clemson, and Oregon. So Matt, out of those teams I listed, or even a team not on the list that it isn't in the tournament, who's a team you like to boom, go on a run this week in their conference tournament. Maybe not win the whole thing, but do enough to get themselves in the big dance. Um. Well, it's a little double-edged short question there because I would start by saying Creighton, but Creighton's going to get in. Creighton's going to make the tournament. They're going to get in. They'll be fine. But that is a team I want to say as a boom. Creighton checks a lot of the boxes for what you like need for a team in the NCAA tournament overall. They defend the three at a very high clip while also shooting at an above average clip from beyond the arc. So I think that puts them above some other teams. Um, And they run the floor on transition offense very well, which leads me to put them as my boom team moving forward during this conference tournament games and leading into March Madness. Uh, The Big East is loaded, however, this year, but I think they're dominated dominated by a lot of guard play. So the other seven teams, eight teams that are competing, they lack that stretch big which is something that I can see helping Creighton long-term with the versatility that they have overall with their stretch four being a phenomenal shooter and being a good post up back to basket, big man. And then the center that they have that just came back from injury. So uh, I'm going to just say Creighton right now is my boom team. And that's another team to watch out for come March madness time. Um, Yeah. Creighton is my, my boom team. How about you? Uh, For me looking at a team from that list, I, I'm going as much of the pain as you say with, I'm going with the Michigan Wolverines. Um, I like the draw they got finishing in the eighth spot, getting Rutgers in the Rutgers first. Yep. And I mean, they, they went toe to toe with my team. As we mentioned a couple weeks ago, Indiana Hoosiers, I think can make a run in March. They went toe to toe with them yesterday, lost in overtime, but Michigan's been playing some pretty competitive games as of late, led by Hunter Dickinson hitting some big shots like that buzzer beater against Wisconsin uh, last weekend. Um, and so they're a team that I think, you know, they have a oh, track yes. record too. You know, Jawan Howard has tournament experience as a player, not as so much as a coach. But they yep. were one of the teams last year that, as much as the Big Ten struggled, they did make the Sweet 16. So I could see them, I don't know if they're going to run the actual tournament, but I could see them going on a run here in the Big Ten tournament and sneaking in to the dance I like that. next Sunday. So you already touched on Creighton here as a team you I like, like that. to make with that you like saying they're good value, saying they're going to play well this week. What are some other teams looking at the major conference tournaments? A lot of them kick off either Tuesday or Wednesday that you think they have good value that could go on a run here. Uh, for the conference tournament itself, I like the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, I know they're the second favorite to win the ACC um, behind Duke, I believe. Yes, Duke. Um, but – I think they're sneaky good. I, I think Miami this whole season has been um, playing up to their competition, which is something you always want to see going into March. And um, they've had a couple tough losses, um, some last-minute ones too, which are going to hurt them. But I, I like Miami's team overall. 
And I don't trust Duke enough. I, I don't. Just this these this new recent Duke team without Coach K and everything. I just there's something about that swagger that they don't have behind themselves anymore. That name, that that Duke basketball franchise name. And I could see them slipping here, and I could see I could see Miami coming out with the with the ACC. I would not be shocked. I would not be shocked at all. See, I'm a little surprised here because Miami is the one seed. So really, they shouldn't. They be, are. They are. They really shouldn't be the wow. sleeper. Really, I think if anyone should yeah. be a sleeper, it would be those Duke Blue Devils. But I guess there's a lot of people fair. are thinking like me because they're at plus 270 yeah. right now. Are they also tied? Is Miami still tied with uh, Virginia by any chance? Same, similar odds? Virginia is plus 350. So, yes, Virginia is also tied with Miami. Sim- okay. So those are both uh, the outliers at two and three there. But, yeah, that's a pro- shocking. I did not know Miami was one. Wow. Got to do my research over here. A little bit, I guess. Yeah, especially going with Creighton as your bubble sleeper but that's okay we'll let it slide um for me yeah i'd say if there's a kind of a dark horse maybe we'll see now i guess they're not a dark horse i do like the blue duke blue devils i think they're hitting their stride here late in the season uh obviously they lost had a horrendous loss at miami earlier and they're losing by 20 but they didn't beat yeah. them at home so we'll see here third time on a neutral floor they would play in the semifinals on friday so i think that'd be a good matchup i don't know villanova was a team i was debating uh, throwing in my maybe you know bubble team that makes a run, but I think it would probably take them winning the whole whole thing to get in. Um, they were playing pretty well, had a couple ranked wins for losing at UConn this weekend. See, I'm just like so I I really don't know. Some of the teams that I think would be sleepers are getting like pretty good odds. Like another one I'd look team I like that's playing well at the right time here UCLA. UCLA is playing really well. I definitely would like them to win the Pac-12 at plus 135. They might even be able to sneak their way up to a one seed in the big dance overall. And I know you're touching, you're talking to me a little bit about Arizona. You, what, are, what are your thoughts on Arizona? Um, they're a team on the opposite side of the spectrum for me, where I like tend to see them as slightly overrated. They are coming out of the Pac-12 as that top two-ish team, if not top one. And I don't know, lately they've just been slumping to me. And they had a 13-point loss to a barely, I think it was a barely 500 Washington State team a little while ago. And then they had a terrible loss to Stanford. It was like an 89-75-78 game. I watched that whole game. They looked just dreadful out there. Um, And their main star in a lot of these games, um, I'm going to butcher his name, so my apologies in advance, Azulaz Tubilius. Tubilius. Yeah. Tubilius. There we go, baby. Um, Their main star for Arizona he just comes up short a lot of the time. And in March, you kind of need a player to turn to when you need a bucket or you need a big stop. And if your star player comes up short in, in two of the three big losses that Arizona's had this year, he's had more fouls than he's had points. So I think that's something just to keep an eye on. I'm not going to sit here and say Arizona is going to get bounced early in the conference tournament or in March Madness. But I do think that is a team that could be slightly overrated to where they, they should be in the rankings. But um. Yeah, so I'll say Arizona is more of my bus team looking at conference play. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Another uh, interesting major tournament here that you know I didn't really think about too much. SEC. We got Alabama, obviously been you know a top team in the country all year. Uh, Brandon Miller, uh, won SEC Player of the Year despite his off the court antics. You also have Kentucky. They're playing well as of late. Got defending National Player of the Year in uh, Oscar Shibway. And yep. then, you know, you also have teams like Tennessee, Texas a and um, Who would you lean towards coming coming away with the SEC title victory? I want to say Texas A&M, but I think I have to go Alabama here. But I want to go. I, I don't know enough about a- A&M to give a good pitch behind it. Uh, Matthew's been lacking on his research the last week or two. So I'm just going to go the favorite with Bama here. Um, they've been playing well all year. I think they're the best team in this conference by a decent – small to decently big gap but I don't know Tennessee I, I want people out there to keep an eye out for Tennessee they won it last year it's not the same team but I think Tennessee's a sneaky team but I'm just going to ride the favorite bias and go Bama I really wish I knew it. enough explanation to talk about A&M though because god that team is sneaky good I'm yeah to watch I mean, them they're play. a frisky frisky bubble team I like yeah. your mention of Tennessee. Um, from what I've watched them this year, obviously using, losing Zakai Ziegler out for the year yeah. now with the torn ACL is tough. But Santiago Vescovi can shoot the lights out of the ball. And I honestly think if he gets hot. It looks like you out there. Oh, 
I, I don't know what film of me you're watching because I do not shoot the heck out of the ball. Um, if I had to lean away, maybe maybe I think that. I'm going to go with that's my sleeper team to win a conference tournament that's not like the favorite in the odds books, uh, at, at the okay. sports books, according to the odds. Yep. So they've already beat Alabama this year. They do struggle with Kentucky. Uh, lost to Kentucky both times. However, I believe if they were to play Kentucky, it would be in the championship. Let me look at this bracket uh, yes. real quick. Yeah, because I believe you are correct. Alabama's, I know Alabama's the one, and then what is, oh, Tennessee's the five. So Tennessee does have a little bit tougher path. They they're, do. They're going to have to, as opposed to Alabama, A and M, and Kentucky, we mentioned here, who all have the double buy. Tennessee only has the single buy. So Tennessee would have to win four games in four days, as opposed to three games in three days. But yeah. I'm going to go with them as my sleeper. Okay. And then just like to that. wrap up a little bit here, because this was also something we were kind of talking about. Um, I'm putting you on the spot a little bit here, but this is more an opinion-based question, so don't worry about it. But something, you know, I have a couple friends who attend schools in the Atlantic 10 Conference. At times, the Atlantic 10 has been a multi-bid league. This year, most likely will not be. And then my sister goes to Bradley. They won their conference regular season title, but then got absolutely smacked yesterday. And the conference championship to Drake, sadly. Would you rather see some of these smaller conferences get multi-bid, be multi-bid leagues, get multiple teams? I know historically sometimes they have been. But say even like a team on the bubble we discussed, Charleston, they've only had three losses all year. But they didn't win their conference regular season title. So like if they don't win their conference championship, they probably won't get in. Would you rather see those teams get in? Or would you rather see, like, right now, it's projected the Big Ten has 10 teams making it. The SEC, you were joking around saying they could have 12 teams make it. I don't think that's going to happen. They're right now at 8. Big 12 has been the best conference all year. Like, they should have 7 teams make it. Those teams are definitely deserving. But would you rather see these smaller schools from these, these maybe less competitive conferences make it as opposed to some of these bubble Big Ten schools that his the past couple years at least have just kind of got smacked in the first round. Yeah, it's definitely opinionated. Um, there's no right or wrong here, I don't think. But um, I, I think the answer is I'd like to see some of these teams in. Um, it's the idea that like let's just use for an example like your Illinois or your Wisconsin. Those teams are are gonna continue year in and year out if we don't say say we don't give these other schools uh, these 12, 20, and three teams chances. You're going to see Wisconsin, and you're going to see Illinois, even if they're only at 12, 13 wins, 14 wins. You're going to see these bigger-name programs get in, and I don't like that for the overall sport and the growth of NCAA basketball or sports in general. you got to give these other schools like a chance because guess what? If they make that historic run, people are going to want to see them next year. People are going to tune into their regular season games, and then that Atlantic 10 conference can get a little more viewership, get a little, get a little more publicity overall. So I think I would like to see it. Will it happen? Like you said, it's happened, but will it continue to happen? I don't know, but I do think it'd be something good for the sport overall to like bring these new teams and give these new schools and programs a chance, let these fan bases go out and watch them play March Madness. And yeah, if they maybe continue around the trajectory of yeah, they just got bounced by a 13-13 and 13 Xavier team, just for an example, or something like that. Then it's like, okay, well, just because they're 22-2 and two doesn't mean anything. There can That can come to a point, but I, st- I still think I'd like to see these teams in there. I'd like to see a little switch up and a little change. What about you? Are you on the opposite side here? I personally am. Um, one, okay. I really think, I don't know, I guess, you know, you, they eventually they have to start winning games or like a school yeah. – uh, Comes like Mountain West, like mid major, but gets multi bids. They don't like, they haven't really won games. So I guess it kind of depends. And we are seeing more like competitive. Like we've had a 15 seed make the Sweet 16 the past two years. So like these smaller conference teams like are starting, you know, like hold their own a little bit. But I mean, like my thing with like College Charles, College of Charleston, like they lost by 20 on the road. Or was it them? I don't know. I just know one of the school, like small right. schools, my buddy was like, saying they should get in no matter what lost by like 20 to Quinnipiac on the road yeah it's like, like you're not getting in if you're that. okay I, okay you have three losses all year but if one of them is by 20 to Quinnipiac on the road how are you gonna fare against I don't Again, know like yeah. Duke like Nova, Duke's playing better Duke, now yeah. but like 
Duke would have been like a seven seed or was was like projected like around like eight, seven, eight earlier. So say, you know, one of those teams, you get them in an eight, nine game against Duke. Like you really think they're going to beat Duke or like one of these no. mid ma- like major programs that has tournament experience if you can't beat your small conference schools? Yeah. So – it, it's it's hard. Like I, I mean, I said this earlier, and it didn't really have much context. But it kind of, in a sense, is is this is an actual double-edged sword. Like, you can. It's about resume. So resume matters. But if you're in a conference where there's no good talent and there's not a deep resume of teams, and you crush all these teams, it's like, why shouldn't we put? Like, why should we put you in just because you beat bad teams? But you're never gonna get the chance to see if they can compete against good teams, if you don't give them that bid. However, like you stated. If they're twenty and three, but they lost by thirty at home to Quinnipiac or to Marist, it's like okay, well, maybe you shouldn't get a bid then. So it's like I I, I see both sides of it, but it, it's hard because I don't think there's ever going to be a clear cut answer if we're going to get these teams in consistently or not. I think it's just year by year kind of basis. I could see where you're coming from. I I could see your argument and your point to it. Like, yeah, Quinnipiac losing by 20 to them, that doesn't look good for no no resume at all. So, yeah, I I get it. Yeah. So, I mean, now, like, you know, it's starting to get more advanced. They got all these, you know, quad one wins, quad three or four losses. Like, they're starting to get more advanced and advanced. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel about it. It's probably good and probably does, you know, level the playing field for some of those schools a little bit. Yeah. But – yeah, we shall see. We shall see. That's the beauty of Selection Sunday, you know. That's the why there's so much oh, suspense I'm, to I'm it. so excited. So excited. All right, flipping over here. We're going to stay on the hardwood, but we're going to go to the professional side. So it's been two weeks since that absolutely abysmal uh, all-star game, if you want to call it a game. Uh, we never really got to talk about it, but we don't We don't have to touch on it. There wasn't, wasn't really much there. We did get to watch All-Star Saturday Night Live together, though, so that was that was a good time. But uh, that was since that time, you know, the time of us having a good time until one of our other friends, you know, went off on us. Uh, Had to ruin the vibe a little bit. Uh, who's a team that has been having good vibes, been booming since the All Star break? That's impressed you in the NBA? It's Philadelphia. We're coming home, baby. My favorite team. Well, I'm sorry, not my favorite team. My favorite player on Philadelphia. James Harden and Joel Embiid. We're going to Philly. I just, this team's been clicking post All-Star break. James Harden's on another world of fucking um, ball handling and just moving the ball, playmaking overall. He's He's been doing it, and Joel's be continuing to become a beast, um, evolving, and that team looks really good right now. They're playing great defense. Maxie's finally fully back playing his regular minutes a game because he was on a minutes restriction when he came back. Uh, before the all-star break for those couple games um it's philly they're they're three games out of the east if i'm not mistaken unless the bucks won last night or tonight i wasn't sure if they played um so whatever two three games out of the first seed i think philly's been clicking however i want to do my second answer of my bus team real quick even though you didn't ask that we'll okay, jump that's to you, fine. Yeah, you you can you can jump my, the you can jump the gun a little bit here Who's my bus boss? team is the chicago bulls chicago bulls they they start they went hot with pat bev i'll give it to him they started out and they were clicking but god this team needs to be so much better in the east with the players that they have it's just the lack of team chemistry it looks like on the floor there's t- possessions where it's just like they don't know who's shooting the ball. They don't know what back screen and who's cutting and who's bringing the ball up sometimes. Like I saw the game against Indiana yesterday during the day, and there was a possession where it was Caruso got the inbound uh, on the uh, their side of the floor, and then he passed it to Levine, and then Levine passed it to DeRozan before they even crossed half court. It's like, bro, what is is this like my park, dude? What's going on here? So it just it, Chicago looks very confused right now, and I think they're definitely going to be one of the teams to slip and I don't know if they even make a play in, to be honest. I think they're going to start slipping bad these last 12, 15 games. So I think it will be interesting, but ah, the Bulls are my bus team, sadly. How about you, Woot? What's your boom team? What's your bus team? So Let's as keep... of recording, um, your 76ers are four games out of first in the East. Celtics are two now after okay. winning the night. Uh, the Bulls, yeah, the Bulls are currently in the outside looking in. They've been passed by the Wizards. But uh, my boom team, I, I also debated being a homer here. But I'm going to go north of the border. 
North of the Illinois border, that is. I'm going to Milwaukee. 17 straight wins. Or was it 18? I don't know. Whatever it was for the loss the other day. It was 17. For the Milwaukee Bucks. Claimed first place in the Eastern Conference now. I know you, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about like dark or not way too early NBA Finals predictions. The Bucks were your team. And at the time, I was kind of like, ah, oh, maybe. I still like the Celtics. But no, the Bucks are coming for the East. I mean, Giannis is the best player in the world. If I'm if I'm being honest, I think he I really think he is. Yeah, I, I can get behind that. I can get behind that. Bust for me. John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies. Um straight shooter, but in the in the wrong ways for John Morant. Uh this is a team, you know, he came yeah. in talking all this all this, oh I'm not worried about anyone in the West. Well since then, a lot of the Western Conference teams have gotten better. And the, yeah. the Grizzlies find themselves six and a half games out of first. I mean, they're going to obviously still squarely be a playoff team. After last year, I'd say they had some pretty high expectations. And right now, yeah, they got some st- they got some off-the-court issues, which is not something, you know, you would have really thought from, the, especially in a market like Memphis. And their last, I, okay, they I, are six and four in their last ten, but like lost two straight. Kind of sold that game to the Clippers last night. Oh, big, big sell job. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's a team that right now, I don't really like the direction they're trending, and you know, my like I said, I was going to be a homer and go with, go with the Lakers, I think they were getting a little cocky, they were talking about, you know, oh, we want to play an inexperienced team in the first round, like, okay, hold your horses, you got a while to get there, but I mean, <laughs> how it's going right now, say the Lakers do get like the Grizzlies in the first round, or I mean, right now, like the like Dallas is seven. If you're giving me yeah. Dallas, Memphis first round, I'm taking the Mavericks. I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if, like, betting wise, they would be considered like the favorites in that series. Yeah. No, I just want to say I, I want to touch on that point about uh, I want to do a little hypothetical right here, like okay. a little segment hypothetical. Let's go through the top eight teams in the West, or we could even go top ten. Best of seven is Memphis beating Denver. No, I don't think so. Are they beating Sacramento? I'll give them a, a chance. I'd say probably. A chance. I still think Sacramento, but yeah. All right. Are they beating Phoenix? No. Are they beating Golden State? No. Minnesota? Yes. I'd say maybe. I'd say maybe. I'd say yes. Say, same, same with Sacramento. Dallas? Nope. Clippers? Nope. If they have to match up against the Lakers, nobody's going to want to play that Lakers team. Nope. New Orleans? Sure. Utah? Sure. So you're looking at a 6-4 to four split, and they're the top two seed? Top three seed, I think. No, top two. Yeah, top two. They're two right now. They're two right now. As of recording, they are two. They have a game lead on the Kings and three on the Suns. I I don't think they beat many teams in the West. And those few teams, I think those series, those games might go six or seven. Minnesota, I think Sacramento could take them six or seven. So I just, yeah. I I mean, yeah, Minnesota took them six last year. Yeah. And Minnesota, like, kind of threw away some of those games. Oh, 100%. Now they got a fucking. uh, Elite rim protector. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. My thing is just like I, for some reason, I commented this on like an Instagram post like weeks ago. It's like about like the Grizzlies doing their dance and like people are still liking it. So I, I don't know, mm-hmm. it must be must still be relevant. But it's, it's like good content. It's good content. Woo. Oh, I appreciate it. But it's just like they got cocky. Like and teams that have yeah. Oh, yeah. historically done like the Clippers a couple years ago. You know, they get yeah. Kawhi and. A bunch of those guys were just banking on like, oh, we're the defending champions because we have the defending champion Kawhi Leonard. Like, no, you guys haven't won, you haven't won anything yet. And I feel like the Grizzlies were yeah. kind of doing that a little bit. Like, okay, we're having another good year this year and be cocky, and you know, now they're acting a fool. And yeah, I mean, they again because you know it said Jaws gonna be out at least two games, but it could be yeah. longer. Like, we kind of have a Kyrie Irving situation here. Situation with John Moran to some degree. To, to a degree, in, indeed. And and what have we seen with those Kyrie Irving teams? Nothing. So exactly. And I mean, if, it's just kind of ironic. History repeats Kyrie, itself. Yeah. yeah. Kyrie, you know, Nike drops Kyrie for John Morant. Now he's out here having a, antics and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I so. forgot about that. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a great comparison, Derek. Wow. So, I don't know. It's I like, about that. you know, I'm all for, you know, athletes, like, having a good time. Doing whatever, uh, not doing whatever, obviously, but you know, having a good time, enjoying themselves, going out to like the club or whatever. You know, if you get your business done on the court, you want to have a good time after. That's fine, but like, you just gotta be careful, like what you're doing, like make good decisions. Like, we don't need to be showing guns, like threatening, 
threatening kids. Like, you know, at the end of the day, like these athletes, like I know Charles Barkley has his quote, you know, I shouldn't be a role model for anyone, but like a lot of kids, like athletes are their role models. So especially yeah. when you're on the, have a pa- chance to be a face of the brand, like John Morant does here. Not a great look. Yep. I want to, I want to add one more to this conversation, okay. not this conversation, but this topic. Uh, I want us each to pick one sleeper team that we think has a chance to make a deep playoff run. They can't be a top two seed in either conference. I won't go Sixers. Um, top two or top three, it could be a three, but just a sleeper team overall that you think could make a sneaky run if they got in or if they are already in. I'll give you the the table. Go ahead. One sleeper team in the NBA. I feel like picking a lot of these West teams is cheating. So I'm going to go with the Knicks. The Knicks oh, have won nine we're on straight the same page. games. Nine straight games. I'm loving Jalen Brunson. I, you know, I've been a big fan of his. I saw him play in high school. Loved him the other day, rocking the Patrick Kane jersey when he got traded to the Rangers. As much as that pained me as a Blackhawks fan, ruined my day the other day. But I knew it was coming. So I mean, I've really liked how the Knicks are playing. Randall's been playing well. Emmanuel, quickly, what do you do? What? How much did he score last night? That game was insane against the Celtics. Something nuts. Something nuts. He went off. It was. I, I know it was forty plus for sure. Yeah. So quickly had thirty eight. It was thirty eight. Okay. Okay. Thirty eight. He still like, balled thirty eight on. Okay, that's good shooting. Go ahead though. But yeah, thirty eight. Like just had like overall just had a good game. So they've had like guys you know really step up this year. Uh, it was a team that last year definitely had a down year. After you know there is the excitement. Um, what year was that? Twenty twenty one. Yeah, twenty one when they were in the playoffs. You know against the Hawks, they kind of got got shut out that series. That was a that was an entertaining series. So I lo- I was well, oh, yeah. much as I love uh, love Trey Young and the Hawks aren't doing anything, but that series was fun. But I would love to see the Knicks. I'd love to see the Garden Rocking. See them maybe you know go on a bit of a run here. Since I stole yeah. your thunder uh, with the Knicks, who who's I'll let you pick one of those West cheater teams. I was gonna let me tell about the Knicks first, and then I'll go to the. Uh, let me talk about the Knicks. Okay. Um, Jalen Brunson, he's him. This guy That's has changed, changed the franchise, and and not many people want to say that. But he definitely changed the culture, at least in that New York franchise. People actually want to go to Madison Square Garden now to watch games. It's not just celebrities being there to be there. Um, and it's an exciting brand of basketball to watch with him and Randall. And uh, another quick fact, I was just scrolling through their uh, schedule. They've actually beaten so many of the top teams in the East post-New um, Year. Since January, they are against top five teams in the east which they are also a top five team now they are 11 and one against top five teams in the east they beat they beat boston twice they beat brooklyn twice i'm not saying brooklyn's great but they're a top five seed i mean back when they beat them that would have still been with like Kyrie and them so yep yep in in january and then they beat them again like four days ago they split with uh milwaukee the only loss but they lost by three against milwaukee they beat sixers both times they beat both times, and they beat the Raptors both times. They are owning the East right now, and it's being low-key. Nobody is talking about it. So the Knicks are my sleeper team for sure. But, West, you're giving me an option to pick one of the cheating teams. And I said top two, maybe top three is out of the order, but I'm throwing a top three team in there. Sacramento, underrated team. So good. Defends the three at the second highest clip in the NBA. Amazing. And they are just they're, – they're such a young team, and I love seeing D. Fox – finally have good players around him. I think this is what everyone's been waiting to see from him. And it's kind of what people want to see from Dame. Like if he had the right pieces around him, Dame much better than D Fox, not putting him in the same combo. But I like Sacramento. I think they're sneaky good. They're just young. That's the only thing that scares me. And in playoffs, especially in the NBA, this is not March Madness. Being too young can burn you sometimes. So that scares me. But I do think they're a sleeper team. I mean, you're, you've are you always been pretty high on them. That's that's my big thing is just the inexperience. I'm a great story. So glad to see that like drought oh, yeah. is definitely coming to an end this year, especially yep. after the Mariners ended theirs. So, you know, now I'm trying to – I think it would be Buffalo. Buffalo Sabres have the longest playoff drought in North American sports. And they have a chance oh, they wow. can sneak in too. I honestly think they might. You said you wanted to talk a little NFL, you know, End of an era. Just a little NFL. We'll we're dabble talk- for three, four minutes. Yeah, we're talking end of the eras here with some playoff droughts. Well, you know, we knew it was going to be the end of the, the Derek Carr era in Las Vegas. And today it announced he's signing with the Saints. What do you think about that move? And does it make the Saints the favorite in that division? As of right now, even as a Falcons fan, I'll say sure. But there's one team that I think is a quarterback away from 
being a top dog in that division, not saying much, maybe a nine and eight record, is Carolina. Yeah. I, I do think Carolina can get a competitive quarterback to compete. I, I think they'll be a good team. But yeah, as of right now, the Saints, after making that move, they got the best quarterback in that um, region. Why do I said region? In that division. Heads so focused on basketball. Um, best quarterback in that division by a landslide. I would argue the next best right now is Ritter. And then you could go PJ Walker. And then I don't know. So. Uh, yeah, I, I like the move overall. I think he's happy. He's finally out of Vegas. He didn't look happy there his last year or two, even though they made a playoff run last year as like that seventh seed. But um, not a playoff run, but they made a playoff spot as that seventh seed. So I, I'm happy for the Saints to get that quarterback. They're done with the Jameis era of just, just the. I've heard from both sides, like reading on Twitter, that Jameis was doing wrong things to the Saints, and then the Saints were treating his injury incorrectly. So I'm just, I think he's happy. Hopefully, he gets released and isn't a backup, and he's there. But uh, yeah, I'm happy overall for Derek Carr. How about you? What are your thoughts, quickly? Yeah, I mean, I was always a big fan of his. I thought he got a little too much criticism in Vegas, too many things. Short end of the stick, him. for sure. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I like that Panthers take. I actually, I don't know if you listen to uh. Pardon my take on Friday. They're interviewing yep. Adam Schefter. Yep. They're saying the Panthers could potentially be like a sleeper team to go after Aaron Rodgers if he decides to leave Green Bay. And I would definitely say that if might be they nice. somehow get Aaron. I don't know Aaron Rodgers yeah. going to play in Carolina, but if they somehow yeah. get him, I would definitely say. But for right now, I'm going with the Saints yeah. just because they are the only team that has their quarterback yeah. figured out outside of the Bucks going with Kyle Trask. Uh, any other moves you wanted to touch on, or should we should we call it there? I'll just spit them out real quick. We don't have to. If anything shocks you, you can say something. Vikings release Eric Kendricks. The Titans release Bud Dupree. Nothing big there. Cowboys franchise tag Pollard. Love that move. Frank Clark is about to be released by the Chiefs. Josh Jacobs gets franchise tagged by the Raiders. And Geno, that three-year, $105 million deal, he's staying there. I love that. What's the quote? Say the quote. They wrote Say me off. I didn't back. write back. He didn't write back, but he guess what? He just wrote that three mil, their three year contract, one hundred and five milli. So yeah, good for Seattle. They got the guy that is now going to lead them under the helm for the next three years. So I think that was the right move. But overall, nothing too shocking. We're just kind of getting on our feet under us right now. Eric Hendricks, I was a little surprised from Minnesota. More of that veteran player with Harrison Smith, but. It moved on from him, so that's some some interesting stuff. Got anything to add with those? Anything? Josh Jacobs, I like that. I like that. that. See, there's like a good Aaron, Vegas move. Yeah, I like um, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers can go to Vegas. I'd be down. I'd be down for it. Um, <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah, I mean, uh, I follow a couple of Vikings fans. They seem pretty disappointed about the Kendrick move, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a business, so that yeah. happens. I'm trying to think. If I want, you think? You, do you think Lamar gets tagged, or do you think they they move on from him in Baltimore? I love. I, everyone keeps rumoring him, him to the Falcons. I hope not. I love Lamar. Like, I love Lamar's, like, just his talent. But I, I don't want to spend $995 trillion on a quarterback right now. So I, I think they tag him. Um, they released something that said they were going to tag him, like, a month ago, maybe just under a month ago. Um, or there was a p- press conference with uh, Harbaugh. So I, I think he stays. But I, I really wouldn't be shocked if he moved. How about you? Think You think he gets tagged? I think probably if he gets moved, he's going to be a New York Jet. So I'll leave it with that. I like that. All right. But, yeah, it's going to wrap it up. I know last time we promised, oh, we have multi-show of the week. No, no, it's March, baby. It's the madness. Yes. We are going mad. We're, We're going have... crazy dropping the content yes. for you boys. We got a show Thursday. We're going to work out the details. There's going to be some sort of live stream or live show Sunday, original bracket predictions or like reactions. And then we're going to go region by region throughout the week leading up till Thursday. That's the plan for right now. I know I got my spring break this weekend. We might even get in person, talk, talk shop there. Oh, you know, maybe we can get an fire. in-person that'd episode. We'll see. That'd be fire. Yeah. It would be great. Um, I just want to leave us with, uh, there might be a sp- special guest joining us this week so keep your eyes out matter of fact there is a special guest i've already confirmed that will be joining us this week to talk some college basketball so that will be fun to look out for so like uh yeah so so to make sure they see this special guest what should the people do Uh, well first you want to like because this video i thought if you guys thought it was good hit the like button then hit the subscribe button that's going to let you know when the videos that that will let you see which videos are out 
and then hit that bell and turn the notifications on. Turn the noti on so that you can get notified when the episode drops and the live guest is there. So you know what? It, it's all in one encompassing. Drop a follow, or drop a sub, drop a like, and don't forget to turn on the noties. Yes, sir. Comment down below if you're that in that noti gang. Where are you at, baby? Yeah, where's the gang at? Where I haven't seen at? any comments. Yes, sir. We're getting the views. Where are you guys at? Start chatting below. Let's get it. Let's get it. So, yeah, we got a lot of big things coming. We are excited for it. Hope you guys are too. And we will see you next time. Peace. Peace.